You're looking at the best-selling luxury three-row SUV. Well, not this one, not yet at least. This is the 2022 Acura MDX, which marks the fourth chapter in this car's story. And if we're being honest, this car has exactly one job, and that's to do everything that its predecessor could do just a little bit better. Let's see if they pulled it off. Arguably the most important ingredient in the MDX recipe is style. For years, customers have appreciated this SUV's sleeker, more aggressive look compared to the masses of competitors from BMW, Mercedes, Lexus. And I gotta say, seeing this car in the metal for the first time it has a real presence to it. And a lot of that has to do with the dimension changes for this generation. Acura put 4.3 inches more in the dash to axle ratio, which is super important when you're changing the way a car looks. Additionally, the wheelbase is 2.8 inches longer, and overall this MDX is 2.2 inches longer than the car it replaces. The front and the rear track are also a bit wider. Now, what does that mean in everyday terms? The car is a lot more muscular looking. The grille, unfortunately, follows the trend, and it's massive, but it's flanked by two beautifully detailed LED headlights. The rest of the MDX's face is actually somewhat restrained. This car has the optional A-Spec package, which is a $3,500 add-on, but comes with some nice features, like these gloss black 20-inch wheels, dark accents, some badges around the body, and a few tricks in the interior. Before we step inside, let's talk just for a second about practicality. With all the seats up in place, you're gonna get 16.3 cubic feet of cargo space. And there's actually this little hidey shelf down below to store additional items. But obviously you can fold down the third row. And when you do, just like this, it's not automatic you get 30.1 cubic feet, which is class competitive. Now, talking about that third row for a second, it is slightly bigger than the car it replaces, but that said, your adult friends probably are not gonna wanna spend too much time back there. Inside is where Acura really tried to step up its game, and the initial impressions here are very good. Any option at this price point is going to be made from nice things, and that's not a surprise. But the overall cabin design in the MDX is what stands out from its competitors. That includes nice soft touch materials, these supportive seats with suede inserts, and red contrast stitching all over the dash. The second row is also a nice place to be, with adequate legroom and headroom, even for your taller friends. But there's a huge piece of hard black plastic that covers the seat back, and we could for sure do without that for over $50,000. On the tech side of things, there are some new toys to play with, and that starts with this new 12.3 inch infotainment setup, which comes standard on every MDX. It's operated with this little square guy here called the True Touch Interface. And the easiest way for me to describe it to you is where you touch on the pad corresponds to what's going on on the screen. So if I touch in the top left corner here, it lights up on the top left corner, middle of the screen, etc., etc. There's a bit of a learning curve, but I have to say you do get used to it pretty quickly. Uh, we first saw this come out on the RDX and it was the same case there. The frustrating part is when you switch over to Apple CarPlay, it goes back to a normal touchpad. It doesn't do the corresponding thing again. Ah, it's a little crazy. Um, and I'm pretty sure we have Apple to blame for that, but nevertheless, it's frustrating as a user. The good news is that wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto both come standard. The extra good news is that this new infotainment setup is still miles better than anything you're gonna find in a Lexus or an Infiniti product. This car also rocks the $4,700 technology package, which is stuffed with things that are actually not all technology. Milano leather seats, nice, but weird in a tech pack. 27 color ambient lighting, second row sunshades, and then some more important stuff. Acura's in-house 3D navigation and real-time traffic updates are included too. However, that package is worth the money alone for one reason, and that's Acura's insanely good ELS 3D audio system. Apart from Bentley's a bajillion dollar name system, this is my favorite in the entire industry, and there's a brand new 12 speaker setup for the MDX. From behind the wheel, there's nothing too crazy to report. The engine is a carryover from last year, and that's gonna be a 3.5 liter V6, and it makes 290 horsepower, 267 pound-feet. There is a new transmission. It's gonna be a 10-speed automatic that replaces last year's nine-speed, and this car features the optional super handling all-wheel drive, which never gets any less fun to say. It can now send 70% of the power to the rear axle, and between the two rear wheels, it can send 100% to either tire, which is kind of nice. 
Uh, there is an upcoming Type S version, which we don't know too much about yet, other than it will use the same powertrain that's in the upcoming TLX Type S. So expect the car to be a little bit more athletic overall. For 99% of people that are going to drive this like a normal three-row SUV, it ticks every box that it has to. The ride, we've been really impressed with the ride quality today. And we're on the highway right now doing about the speed limit or so. Uh, and the noise insulation is very good as well. Those are two foundational things that need to be well done in this segment of vehicle. That said, we got into the car right away earlier and decided the steering is really on the light side. I mean, some of the competitors, Lexus and Mercedes, uh, they feature really light steering in, in their cars as well, but it almost kind of threw me off. It's, it's a little light for my liking. Uh, similarly, the brake pedal is super touchy. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you're there, everything works out just fine. You can put the car into sport mode and when you do take it over to sport mode, it makes a little spaceship noise and gets a little bit louder, but that's about it. There's no turbo on this engine, so the power actually doesn't attack you too much down low. You gotta lean into it to get all of the grunt. And one other bragging point for the MDX is standard Acura watch. And with that is this adaptive cruise control. The adaptive lane keep assist does a really good job of keeping the car right in the middle of the lane. Unlike past versions with this car and some of the other Honda Acura products, it kind of ping pong back and forth. They really got that figured out this time around. Uh, and the car stays right in the middle of the lane where you want it. We have to remember that this car has some stiff competition. I've already named a few of them in this video. You have the Mercedes-Benz GLE, BMW X5, Audi Q7, alternative products from there. There's lots of options in the class. And you know what? This isn't the outright best option. I can't say that. But I will say that Acura did exactly what it needed to do to keep this car competitive and to keep selling it in the huge numbers that they already do. And it's actually a pretty good value too. The new MDX starts at $46,900 and the car we're driving with a few optional packages and a fancy paint job is $57,100. But to put that into context, the Mercedes GLE starts at $57,000. So in this case, you're getting a car with lots of options and all wheel drive for about the same as a base spec competitor. That should be more than enough to at least make you consider the MDX before you immediately go and buy something German. 